My name's Jimmy Fox. Um, my uncle was Seamus Ludlow. Uh, Seamus Ludlow was murdered on the 2nd of May 1976. It took us 22 years to find out uh, who actually killed him. Seamus was, I have to say, a very inoffensive type of a, a man, uh, a likeable wee character, small of stature, um, you know, unconfrontational, easy going sort of a wee character. He never married. He, he lived with his with his mother uh, in at Tesla Cross uh, all his life. We worked up at the sawmill. He told me stories about having worked in uh, in farms all his life, all his working life. Actually, been hired out to farms, which was uh, sort of fascinating to listen to, and been hired out for six months at a time. Seamus was a creature of habit. You know, he liked his pint in the evening. Uh, he he would go in on a Saturday evening and have his few pints in the his do arms usually. Uh, and come home. And that was his pattern, that was the way he went on. But on this night, on the, on the night of the, uh, the, the, the 1st of May, he didn't, he didn't show up. Uh, he didn't arrive home. So on the 2nd of May, on the Sunday, he was, uh, he was missing basically. And, and, and there, was, there was alarm now. A lot of single men maybe of that age, if they didn't show up, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that much of a hue and cry. But with Seamus it was, it was totally out of character. So, um, my uncles, my father, uh, uh, a lot of men went out looking for him, uh, searching around the pubs in and out, asking where he'd been, who had seen him. Uh, and at about three o'clock, um, they were coming back through from, from the Ballymascanlan and the things, and there was a checkpoint at the bottom of the Ballymascanlan Road, and they had asked the guard what was wrong, and he said that a body had been discovered. And they said they were looking for um, this this man, and uh, and he allowed them to go up and see, and and unfortunately, yes, it was Seamus, and they had identified him. As it turned out, he had been shot three times in in the chest, and he uh, he'd been fully clothed. His shoes were were very clean. Uh, it was a muddy lane. It was down about twenty yards, uh, a, a wee muddy lane down in uh, in just about a mile from from where Seamus lived. So the speculation was that uh, it was the IRA. Now my father was a Republican uh, and knew a lot of Republicans. And he went straight away and asked um, probably the most senior Republican in the area at that time uh, and was given an assurance from this man who knew and was actually a good friend of my father's that the IRA had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with it. So as far as we were concerned, that was it. The IRA had nothing to do with it. And from that day on, it, that wasn't even an issue for us. Um, but it was for other members of the family and for other you know, neighbours and friends because the guards were so adamant that it was the IRA. And then stories started to appear in, in newspapers saying that because Seamus worked in the wood that he must have found a dump in the wood and that the IRA shot him. I have to say a real slur on our family uh, and particularly on Seamus' uh, name uh, to be branded basically an informer. Seamus was killed, obviously a huge wrong done to him and, and the family, but the wrong that was done by the, uh, the guards after that in, in, in basically leading us all down a false trail was equally as bad, certainly for the family. They were clearly saying not only that the IRA had killed him, but they then developed that, that it was actually a member of the family who was also in the IRA, according to them, who actually killed him. And so you can picture how that divided the family. It was always there. It was always sitting in the background. Um, as I say, I, I, I was a Republican. I joined the IRA uh, when I was 17 years of age. But I have another cousin who joined the Free State Army uh, around the same time. Uh, and, you know, for years we never spoke. For years there was no contact whatsoever. So after 22 years, in 1998, a journalist approached the family to tell them that he knew who had killed our uncle. The, the four people who were, um, who, 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 who were involved in the murder were all arrested and questioned in 1978, two years after the, the murder in, in the north. Um, and one of them was a very infamous um, loyalist killer. He was named as, as Mambo Carroll, uh, a, a chief suspect in the murder of Myra Drum as well. Um, but there was one 
chap Paul Hoskins who was in the car who by all accounts appears to have been just somebody who, who, who was innocent enough and got caught up in the whole thing that night. Uh, Seamus w- was out all that Saturday evening having a few drinks and a bit of crack as was his custom uh, and he stood outside the Liz Do Arms Tom and the lift home and unfortunately this was the car that pulled up. Seamus got into the back and according to Paul Hoskins they uh, drove out the road. He told them uh, pull up here this is where I live at Thistle Cross. They turned right drove past the house, down about a mile to a little lane on the, on the down beside Ballymiscanlon, reversed the car down there, and Mambo Carroll is apparently turned round from the front seat and, and shot him. Seamus's case was involved in that whole Baron report. Michael McDowell came out and said that, uh, you know, he was sorry that the family had suffered and, and all of that. And I have to say... Um, was there an apology? Was there was there a genuine apology by people who said, uh, you know, we, we, we did a disservice to the family and to, to Seamus's memory? No, no, there wasn't. Uh, there, there were half-hearted, uh, there was a half-hearted attempt by him. Uh, even today, like, the guards haven't come out forthright and said why the investigation stopped. Why, who, who stopped it? Why was it not fully investigated? Why, uh, why did they not... Um, pursue these men like you know I'm a Republican I've seen I've seen friends and comrades pursued at length I've been in jail with people who were held on extradition warrants for an awful lot less than murder uh, I've seen people uh, handed over I've seen Desi Ellis handed over uh, you know on a stretcher to England and yet they didn't even apply to get these people back across you know and I wonder how many more people out there believe the lies that they were told and so, you know, another good reason for a full public inquiry is that everybody will know and we will hear the full truth and the people who committed the wrong. And I'm talking about not only the people who killed them, but I'm talking specifically about the people who, who, who covered up and led, uh, who, who were leading members of the, the government, who were leading members of the Free State uh, uh, Security Services at the time that they should be accountable, that they should be able to stand up and tell us why, why this happened.